the latest on the crisis with Russia over Ukraine. The U.S. delivering a formal written response to Russian demands as it takes measures to bolster NATO allies and Ukraine's military. Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, responding, saying there is no positive reaction on the main issue of this document, but there are grounds on other issues to keep on talking. More than 100,000 Russian troops massed around Ukraine's borders right now, while Russia's defense ministry releasing more videos showing warships taking part in what it says are just drills in the Black Sea. Despite Russian denials, America's chief negotiator in talks right now with Russia, warning of the possibility of an imminent Russian attack. Ian Panel joining me live from Ukraine, along with our State Department reporter Connor Finnegan. Ian, let's start with you. It seems like we're hearing mixed messages here. Some officials say that invasion could be imminent. Others say if it happens, it could be a week or more away. Where's the disconnect and what do you know? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that, that Washington is certainly on a different step to the Ukrainian government and I think to some other governments in the region who perhaps feel that the crisis is less um, uh, prescient. The sense you get here in Ukraine is, yes, of course, they're aware that they're under pressure. They know that they're surrounded uh, on at least two to three fronts uh, by Russian troops. And they know and they certainly think that the Kremlin has malign intent. But what they're saying is they don't think they're quite in position to be able to launch a full scale invasion at this point. That's not what we're hearing from Washington, uh, who believes that that absolutely could happen. Uh, I think one of the factors here is clearly the Ukrainians have got used to the threat. You know, for them, I, I spoke to the foreign minister yesterday, he, he made a point, look, we were invaded in 2014. We're not about to be invaded. We already have been when Russia annexed Crimea, when it backed separatists in the east of the country, in the Donbass. Uh, essentially, Russia moved into the country. It has influence. It has troops on the ground in parts of Ukraine. Um, and so, as far as they're concerned, this is more of the same, even though the temper has increased. I think their more immediate concern is not necessarily of a military intervention, but attempts to try and sow discord and chaos in the country. If you talk to Ukrainians, certainly over the last few weeks, generally they haven't been that bothered, but now you're seeing increasing signs of certainly concern. So, Connor, you have some new reporting about the potential for Russia to invade Ukraine during the Olympics. What have you found out? Yeah, that's right, Kira. Who would have thought the Olympics, of all things, would really be involved in this? But that's exactly what Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman said yesterday. She's that chief negotiator that you mentioned earlier. She led the first round of talks between the U.S. and Russia earlier this month. And she warned yesterday that Vladimir Putin is ready at this moment in time to invade. She said that there is every indication that he is going to use military force sometime perhaps now and mid middle of February. Of course, the middle of February is when those Winter Olympics are happening in Beijing. And there is a, a thought here that perhaps Vladimir Putin would not want to upset his, his partner Xi Jinping of China by launching some kind of attack on Ukraine during the Winter Olympics. There are some precedents, though. Back in 2014, as Ian mentioned, when Russia first annexed Crimea and attacked eastern parts of Ukraine, it was the day after the Winter Olympics ended that he made that move. Those Winter Olympics hosted, of course, by Vladimir Putin, by Russia in Sochi. But years earlier, when Beijing hosted the Summer Olympics back in 2008, Putin did so. He attacked uh, the country Georgia on the day of the opening ceremony for Beijing. And, and so there's a, some, some mixed precedents here in terms of what we could see. But again, U.S. officials highly concerned that it could happen any moment now. So, Ian, how are Ukrainians reacting to all of this and the escalating tensions? Yeah, I mean, I think you are seeing a ramping up uh, of that sense of this is something that they're absolutely having to deal with. I think the challenge for President Zelensky is he sees in the Kremlin, a policy of trying to sow disinformation in the country, to try and turn Ukrainians against each other, to try and unsettle people and make them nervous, potentially to cause a run uh, on the dollar, people rushing to the banks to try and withdraw what hard currency uh, that, that they have, a run on the, the local currency, rather. So, uh, you know, he's going to the nation every few days to try and reassure them that everything is okay. But, of course, they want more support from 
the American military. I mean, uh, we were out on the front lines with General Pavlyuk, who commands 50,000 troops on the Eastern Front. Uh, he was very clear that the best deterrent against a, uh, any further Russian aggression would be more weapons from America. So these weapons we're seeing coming in, not just from the US, from other NATO countries, are absolutely welcome here. They see themselves in the future, perhaps, as part of NATO. That's certainly not what Russia wants. In panel, Connor Finnegan. Thank you, gentlemen. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.